Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void and your Sunday series. It's gonna be a best of five here between Hero and Raider on Ephemera on the latter edition from BlizzCon 2019. This is not in the latest patch, but holy smokes, this series is incredible. I watched it live and I wanted to cast it, so let's go ahead and get right on into it. Top left hand corner is the Red Protoss player Hero. Making it all the way to BlizzCon for 2019, which means he had an incredible year. And in the bottom right, the young Italian player, it is Raynor. He is blue and he is Zerg. So, boo. Let's see. Let's see how this works out for both these players. By golly. I love them both. Hero, one of my favorite Protoss players for sure. Just solid across the board. I can't think of any weaknesses he has at all. And honestly, to make it into the final 16 of BlizzCon, you can't have any weaknesses, period. It's just not going to happen, right? So, Rainer goes for the hatch first at his third base location, recognizing the threat of a pro block, and just deals with it by going for the third first. It's not a big deal. He wants a third base out here soon anyway. It's not a problem. Like, back in Heart of the Swarm, and even early Legacy of the Void, this would have stunk. You didn't want to base out here this soon, because it would take so long for you to get your natural up anyway. And just having it that far away, just for that long, was an annoyance. But as it stands, eh. You're going to get a third base in like a minute flat anyway, and there's not much the Protoss player can do to stop you. <clears throat> so, no big deal. Not actually saturating his gas yet. Is, is he being... Rainer, are you being tossed off your game? No, he's just doing the thing where he just slowly saturates his gas with workers coming out of these eggs. I've seen it, and I don't know what the purpose is behind it. I really don't. There's got to be some crazy timing somebody has figured out. I don't know what it is. I need to figure out why we're doing that. Anyway, Hero's got his second gas. He's got his second pylon. Where's his second pylon? One pylon. Doop, doop. Two, oh, there's your two pylon. Okay, a little bit later than I was expecting it, but maybe they're both really focusing <laughs> on the mineral uh, minerals game there back home. Anyway, four lings in production. Really don't need much more than that. Maybe another one if it's an adept coming out, and it is in fact an adept coming out. St uh, could be a stalker, though. Overlord is not quite sure. What it could be, so he's going to hang out here and be safe. Stargate opening out of Hero. Hey, submit those Oracle names. I've got a couple of them ready for today, but if we go Oracles in every one of these games and it is a five-game series, uh, I'm going to run out is what I'm trying to say. I've got three here, so if you want your Oracle name red, it's a really good time to do it. It's going to show up in <laughs> a very, very next up cast here is what we're looking at here. Anyway, <clears throat> Zergling coming across for the scouting purposes. Adept here ready to kill some Zerglings. Or maybe a drone if you get lucky. No queen here. Oh, just kidding. There's a queen there. Wow, really, really not showing up here on that creep. Same colors, generally. Third base, Raider wants to get up. Can't really do it until he's got speedlings or until his queen's going to get over there. The creep spread is happening a little bit. Yeah, this number of Zerglings can at least force the Adept back, and then you can probably throw down your hatchery. There's the drone. All right, so so far, so good. Annoying. Ooh, ooh, oh gosh. Oh, finished. Finished the transfer, got out of there. That was great. So Oracle on the way. Oracle's name is Item Doing Incredibly Odd Things, or Idiot, for short. This item seems to have a mind of its own. It does things no one would expect, as this Phoenix is going to kill this Overlord. Because of its penchant for the unexpected, it one day launched into space only to later latch onto an Oracle's AI matrix. Now, the poor Oracle is slowly being corrupted by madness, as odd things keep happening when it just wants to shoot miners with laser beams. Yeah, I understand that, man. Sometimes I just want to shoot miners with laser beams too, and, well, odd things keep happening, so... Pff, annoying stuff for sure. Alright, idiot, where are you? Here's idiot. Zerglings see it coming on in. There's a spore crawler on the way. There's two queens ready to rock. Getting some early shots off of the Phoenix is pretty good. Three queens at the third base and a spore. Holy smokes. You're not accomplishing anything here, Rainer. Or Hero, rather. Hero's not really accomplishing anything but successfully defending his base because he's really successfully defending his base. Yeah, the positioning there, just to know, just to know where they're going to go, is just so important. And being prepared properly. It is the Zerg style. It is the Rainer style. It's the Serral style. It's the macro Zerg defend, defend, defend style. Of all time. Any sign of a third base from Hero? Uh, no. Look at all these gateways, too. How much gas do we have? We've got all the gas. Oh, just kidding. We pulled off of one of them. So this could be a lot of charge lots. And keep in mind, this is the last patch. So charge lots do their full damage. Infested Terrans exist. We don't have Microbial Shroud, etc., etc. 
So no drones have died, which bodes exceptionally poorly at this stage of the game for Hero. You really want to kill something, but if you can, it's going to be a bad time. That Oracle needs to come home and defend that, I think. Dude, you could probably take that with those lings. The Oracle's around, though. So just, I guess, running out there, keeping the Oracle at home would be pretty good. Does throw down a revelation on those Urglings, keeping them in the Protoss eye. And there's your third base. Okay, so yes. I mean, I was over here, and I'm like, man... Two base in it, huh? Nope, definitely a third base. Another gateway coming up. So Hero just playing really, really standard. He's got a ton of sentries. He has an immortal. He's got a warp prism about to finish up here. Once the warp prism finishes up, it is time to move out. And in fact, we're trying to do it. But the pathing is dumb sometimes. And here goes nothing. Here goes an attempt to kill the Zerg player before he gets really big and scary. Um, like four or five bases. And he has broodlords and corruptors and investors and whatnot. So this is how you have to play this if you're Protoss. Hero is doing exactly what you need to do. Follow the plan, guy. Get a third base up behind it. Keep the Zerg player on his back foot so he can't retaliate against the third. And then just have a giant scary big army. And see what you can get done. Did he bring detection? He did not bring detection, which is going to be a problem. Because fighting on creeps is exactly what Raynor wants. That said, he only has a handful of Ravagers here. Ooh, the force fields mean the Ravagers are going to die. Transfuse is trying to save him. Nope. Two Ravagers down instantly here. Zealots at the front dealing with the Zerglings pretty effectively. Overlord goes down. Third base in a lot of trouble right now. Can't they stand in? No, nice force fields. The Queens are getting hacked to pieces by the Zealots. And trying to get some Ravagers on the backside. They get the War Prism. They get the War Prism. What a huge pickup. Reinforcement is not going to happen. Drones are fighting for their lives right now. Can they make it is the question of the day. Drones are desperately trying to stop this army. They're not very good against anything that's here, though. Not really anything in the Protoss army that drones are good against. Reinforcing units coming in. Defender's advantage really kicking in for Raynor right now. And it looks like Raynor has just barely been able to hold off this Protoss assault by the skin of his teeth. He lost 12 drones in the process. He lost some queens in the process. He lost Ravagers. He really, really, really wants to kill these sentries. One does go down. Oh, another one goes down. That hurts. Raynor is not in a great place right now. Losing that warp prism was a huge deal. The fact that he couldn't warp in reinforcements at the front really made it a lot easier for Raynor to hold. I know it was hard to hold, but would have been even harder to hold if there's a warp prism there. So those three Ravagers that burned it down with Corrosive Bile are the heroes of the swarm today. Army supply 41 to 34. The counterattack by Raynor is looking okay, but... Yeah, man. You're not going to get in there. Not going to happen at all. There's two Immortals. You largely have Roaches. Do you want to spend resources on Ravagers? I don't know. So, woo! Usually, in that kind of an attack, either the Protoss wins or the Zerg wins. But we actually just brought ourselves to a stalemate at this stage, and nobody is really super ahead right now. I mean, it's three base to three base, so that's really nice for Hero. I really don't sign about, see a sign of a fourth for Raynor, either. Although maybe this would be a logical place to do it. Adepts dropping on in to the natural base. Phoenix flying around inside the main. Any drones? I mean, other than those 12 that were killed during that attack, I think maybe one other one has gone down. Raynor's oversaturated at his natural. Where the heck is his fourth? He could probably transfer workers. Never mind, his fourth is now saturated too. There you go. Fourth base now coming up at about eight and a half minutes, which seems late, but I don't know. He was under attack, man. You wanted to expand right during that onslaught? I don't want him to. That's scary stuff. Robotics Bay coming on in, whether for Disruptors or for Colossus, I don't know. Either one would be pretty decent here, I gotta say. Although with a heavy Ling count, Colossus would be incredible. And Disruptor, not as good, actually. Warp Prism sneaking on in, got a couple of depths here, but perfectly positioned again here is Raynor. Just get on out, you're gonna get nothing done there. Thank you for asking, though. Thank you for offering to get something done. Overseer scouts around and sees... Ah, uh, it's okay. Twilight Council. Did he scout the Robotics Bay? There's another gateway. Where's the Robotics Bay? Oh, it's up here. Yes. So, in fact, he did get it. Creep spread pushing out across these bridges. And along the left side a little bit. And not so much out to the right side, interestingly enough. He doesn't have much vision over there except for these lings. Maybe he's counting on them to keep him apprised. It's going to be a mortal drop. It's going to be Colossus with extended thermal lance here from Hero. Spire on the way from Raynor. 
Bit of an engagement here with a handful of Lings, but that is too much Protoss for those Lings to handle. They got plus one melee attack, which is more upgrades than anybody else has in this game as far as attack and armor are concerned. And the Immortal Harass in this position is actually kind of incredibly annoying. You gotta split your army up around the backside and kind of keep some up here too. Zerglings again just harassing this army as Hero tries to take a fourth base. It is coming up now. Rainer's at 107 supply and he's basically maxed out. And he's sitting on a Roach Ravager Ling composition, which is not going to be super good. But he's got a Spire on the way and an Infestation Pit, which indicates that we will start seeing some Broodlords sooner rather than later. Contaminate Toss Down so that that... Oh, Contaminate Toss Down so the Colossus is not going to finish. And he does force a cancel on the fourth base. Rainer! Rainer forces a cancel on Hero's fourth base. A massive, massive pickup for him. That was great. You want to do that as much as you can if you're a third player for sure. I mean, if you could force a cancel on any of your opponent's bases they're trying to throw up, you're going to have a good time. So, do it. Banelings are here because of that Zealot count. Count? Count position count. All right, man. Banelings going to explode on up. Nice force fields. Really nice force fields, though. A lot of Banelings just died there without accomplishing a whole lot. And uh, we got Lings in production, but Lings are not what you want right now. Lings are really bad against a three Colossus, four Colossus setup here. Oh my gosh, the Colossus are having a great time. Drones going down. Hatchery taking direct shots. Roach Ravager not going to do much. Banelings coming on in and actually splitting against the Banelings. Immortals absorbing a lot of that damage, which is really nice. More Banelings coming in. Absorbing. And the Colossus trying to fight on their own. The Ravager count is just too high. Charge lots coming in to try to assist saving one of the Colossus. Ten kills on that one. The other one, oh, did it actually come out and die here? What an absolutely... Incredible hold from Rainer. I thought for sure he was dead. Oh, the Ravager's really holding on. <laughs> really, really holding on there. Oh my gosh. That was ridiculous. Now, I have watched the series, but I don't remember all the details because I have three brain cells in my head as a result of having three kids. But, um, wow. Rainer... I don't know how he held that attack, other than defender's advantage, other than the Banelings getting some connections eventually. Zergling's going to try to force a cancel here. Oh my gosh, they're going to do it. They're going to force a cancel. Wow, and five probes going down too. Ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous that Raynor is in a position to win this game. He's up in this game. 151, 117 supply. Colossus harass. <laughs> Incoming, it's worse than a mortal harass by about a million percent. Corruptors are out now, though, so the War Prism needs to get on out. And it does. Five Stalkers in production, Greater Spire coming up, too. What a game one. What a super, super fun game one this has been. I really can't believe that Rainer held either of those major attacks we saw today. In game one, Banelings going for something out of an attack. They have the plus two, so they one-shot probes. Not bad. Eight probes going down. I assume that's what that was the last time we saw those five probes going down. It was something of a Baneling attack. Doing a little bit, but Banelings really just want to engage on all of the things here. Nova. Disruptor goes down. No more Novas for you. Corruptor's flying in versus the Colossus. Colossus in a lot of trouble, and the War Prism doesn't really want to stick around either. So they're going to chase the War Prism down and then kill the Colossus. Novas get a nice hit on some Ravagers here. What absolute chaos right now. Nova, great split from Raynor. Man, how much do you have to split as a Zerg player normally? This army is just backed into a corner. Completely dead. Disruptor down. Stalker's down. They position themselves fairly well. But at the end of the time, good game. Raynor ends up winning game number one there. Recognizing he's down 143 to 55 supply. His army supplies almost nothing at this time. He's mined out of his main base and his natural base. His third is fine. His fourth is just barely coming up. But Rainer sitting on a fifth base himself. So army supply alone was enough for him to tap out. What a great game number one. Ah, 21 drones died. 14 probes died. Four colossus. Four immortals. Four disruptors. 25 sentries is a lot of sentries. That's tons of gas. Hero, 20,000 resources. Lost 18,000 total for Rainer. Ended up losing 32 roaches, 50 banelings, 10 ravagers, 212 zerglings. But no bases. And that is going to be the key in your ZVP. Is how many bases are you going to lose? Hmm? Hmm. All right. Well, that's going to be it for game number one. Let's go ahead and head over to game number two here. I really feel like if either of those battles had gone just slightly different, Hero could have won this game one and been in a great position. But as it stands, his back is against the wall. It's not quite over, 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 over yet. 
If it was like a best of one or a best of three, it'd be really hard to win this whole thing. But, you know, going down one in a best of five, not the end of the world. So let's go into game at number two. Game two, we find ourselves on Acropolis, the latter edition. It's going to be Rainer in the bottom right and Hero in the top left. All right, Hero. Yeah, almost had him in game number one. Man, that was a great timing attack. But getting your uh, Warp Prism sniped, whew, that is hard to come back from when you're doing a timing attack. That is for sure. <laughs> hey, did you know there's merch? Falcon Paladin dot store has shirts, hoodies, pillows, uh, ugly Christmas sweaters as shirts, and a shirt for every single race. So your race is represented. Again, falconpaladin.store for all of your Christmas shopping needs. Rainer says, uh, hold, oh, hang on. Are we? Mm, okay. Kind of felt like the probe was going to follow him there, but not going to be that annoying, says Hero. 18 supply, and I'm still trying to figure out how come you wait so long to build your gas at 18 supply, man. He had like 150 minerals there. And then I guess it means you can go ahead and toss down your pool. I don't know, man. I just don't know if the timing works out. That's all I'm trying to say. I guess maybe you get your gas a little bit faster. But the timings that I've done, it kind of works out. I should do what the pros do, though. Do some more experimentation with it. Standard old one gate expand from Hero, recognizing there is no threat from the Zerg. I don't need to get, like, quick cannons or sentries or anything, so let's go ahead and throw that, uh, command center. Let's throw that Nexus down, baby! Let's get it down here. No, 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 Overlord scouting on out, trying to see what is what. Can I tell you how busy my Sundays are for TV watching right now? Holy crap. I got a new episode of Rick and Morty. I'm watching Mr. Robot. I'm watching Watchmen and Silicon Valley. It is too much. It is too much for one night of TV. And I wish they'd all just pop on Sunday, but they all come around late on Sunday. So I can't even start watching until like 6 or 7 p.m. And that just means I go to bed at 1.30 and jeesh. I mean, the good news is Silicon Valley is not that long of a season. Mr. Robot, I think, is almost done too. And Watchmen's not a super long run either. So, I mean, this is just a weird confluence of events where there's just a lot going on on the same night for me for TV. And uh, it'll, it'll calm down. It'll calm down eventually. So yeah, my Sunday, basically at this point, as the probe tries to block that probe. The probe tries to block the probe. The probe tries to block the hatch. Oh my gosh, you got it again. You madman. All right, there. It finally goes down. Uh, yeah, so my Sunday has basically been do some streaming in the morning, have some lunch, uh, then go ahead and cast a best of five here, cast a cheese compilation, Cast any videos that I wasn't able to get to during the week, so I have a seven-day supply of a buffer here for y'all, so in case I, I don't know, I'm sick one day, you don't miss a cast, and then watch a ton of TV. So, hooray, Sunday! Spent entirely indoors. Whee! It's everyone's favorite thing, staying indoors, especially in the winter, man. Have I told you how much snow I've gotten? How much snow I've gotten? I shoveled my driveway three times in 24 hours, is how much snow I've gotten over the Thanksgiving break. So, I don't know, by the time you hear this, maybe the snow will all have melted and I'll have forgotten, but just remember, Thanksgiving 2019 was a ton of snow and I hated it. The depth does get out of there, just barely saving her own life. We're not actually going Stargate this game, so we might not run out of, uh, out of Oracle names, which is fantastic news for all of you Oracle name fans out there. So again, War Prism indicates aggression. If you have a War Prism, you're going for an attack. Sooner rather than later. There's no reason to have a War Prism if you're going to sit back home. You can warp in de defense at pylons regardless. Over... Nope, Overlord comes in. Says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Robotics facility. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Gateway, gateway. Mm -hmm, yes, of course. There's nothing you can do about this because you don't have any Phoenix. But the scouting be perfect in game number two here. That's brutal. I mean, what are you going to do other than move? Right? Rotorn coming in. Handful of Lings coming in. And Queens. Ling Queen can handle this. Are these links actually... Ooh, they get the Adepts running out in the middle of the map. That was pretty good. Liking that. So Adepts can't join in on the festivities. Are you trying to force field a ramp? Uh, not going to work out, man. Zerglings and Queens are perfect against Immortals and Sentries in every possible way. Unless you have multiple Adepts. Or multiple Sentries, rather. And the force fields are amazing. Then what you want are Ravagers. But that's not what this is. This is one 
one sentry and one immortal. It's just not enough to get anything done. He's just trying to force out units, I think, from Raynor. Get some damage where he can find it, but not really finding it all that well. So game two is not going super well. Here for Hero. He's going to toss that out. I mean, I guess he did force out a ton of lings that haven't done anything for Raynor. Which, honestly, this is what I see on ladder more than I'd like to. Is my opponent pushing out with some stuff and I make some units and they're like, just kidding. I'm like, I could have 80 drones by now, but instead you made me make a bunch of roaches. Ah, and I probably over prepare is another thing. It's hard to balance. It is really hard to balance as they're making just enough units to where you don't die, but not so many units that you're killing your economy. It is frustrating. It really is. Anyway, doo -doo -doo -doo, Zerglings, ready to rock. Ready to try to break through this front door. But there are three sentries now, so that's not going to work out at all. Uh, three sentries can infinitely force field something like this. One ramp, anyway. I like how they're like, we're going to move out. Hold on, there's 50 Zerglings out there. Maybe we'll wait for additional units. Like, some Zealots would be good. And hey, look, some Zealots. Twilight Council finishing up. They'll get charged at some point. Not starting yet, though. Overlord cruising about. Sees nothing really much else as far as scouting information goes. I guess does catch. The Twilight Council exists, but that's no surprise to Rainer at all. Rainer's going for a lair. It's got more roaches, more ravagers here. That sentry died, but the immortal's still alive. I'm doing a pretty good job of it as well. Ah, I was going to see how many kills the Immortal has. Either way. Hey, third base, are you in trouble? Uh, not with a number of or or sentries here. Ground oracles. Nice. So defending the third base better here is Hero. That's a nice pickup from him. Hallucinating Phoenix scouts about. Ends up. I guess Evolution Chamber does see the Baneling Nest. Does see the Roach Warren. Doesn't see a Spire. So don't have to worry about that, which is nice. Immediately tosses down a Robotics Bay. And another Robotics Facility. As soon as he sues, sees there is no Spire. Hmm. I mean, ugh, the Colossus did pretty well for themselves in the last battle, and it, the Corruptors didn't really show up until the second time around. That first engagement was pretty good, but man, Roach, Ravager, and Baneling did better than I would expect out of Rainer. Although I have just been making a whole ton of Banelings in my team games, at least, uh, that I do with Somicron. Add on twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin about once or twice a week. Actually, we'll be playing Halo, uh, like original Halo what do they call that? Uh, Halo CE, like Combat Edition. I don't know why they call it that. It's just this Halo 1, man. Sentry down. Co-op. Co-op campaign, which I'm super duper excited for. That's going to be a ton of fun. Rainer, fourth base up along the right side. No sign of a fourth from here, but the third base is very excellently well saturated. Some mortal still alive. Really no way to super kill this unless it sets down and holds still for a minute. In which case, Ravagers will kill it. But if you just keep it moving, it's impossible to kill because Mulists don't exist. Going to be Colossus again, recognizing there are not going to be any Corruptors anytime soon. So I kind of like it. Although, oh, man, Force Field placement needs to be really good or the Banelings are going to crush. I always thought Banelings were not that great against Protoss, but man, if you get clumped up Stalkers, if they get direct hits on Colossus, Colossus are actually not that tanky. So, for example, if you're going to make 27 Banelings... You could maybe do all right versus Colossus if you're getting direct hits on them, you know what I mean? Hallucinated Phoenix still scouting around, trying to see if there's a Spire, trying to see if there's an Infestation Pit. Or this is this is the attack, and this is the attack. Oh, there's not a lot here for Hero. Force Fields are going to have to be pretty much perfect. Here we go. There's one Colossus out. Extended Thermal Lance is not even done. Oh, gosh, Hero. Oh, guy. Ah... Uh... Yeah, this looks really bad for Hero. The Force Fields are trying to keep the Banelings out, but they're finding connections. They're exploding right on top of sentries. The Force Field count is going to be a lot worse from this point on. Colossus are trying to fight, and wow, Raider pulls back. Oh, I thought he had that fight for a second there, but apparently Colossus is doing better than I thought. 11 kills and 9 kills, respectively. Shield battery drained of every bit of energy that it had. Uh, some probes did die there. A bit of a contamination. Stopping more Colossus production. A spire is on the way. It's not here yet. Colossus Extended Thermal Lance is still not done. Plus 2 attack is still not done. Really don't have any zealots in this group at all. Oh, God, the dodges. 
The dodges are pretty great. Extend the Thermal Lance, now finish. Ground weapons level two. Finishing up here as well. Bane Ling's getting into third. They don't have plus two attack. But they'll take down five year probes anyway. Thanks for asking. We'll make it 11, how about? And a shield battery? Yes. I guess that will work out if you are a raider. All right, army supply, 82 to 72. 22 lings in production, nine Bane Ling's in production. Colossus do not want to engage up that ramp. He's trying to blink stalker back down the ramp and be as efficient as he can. Take some corrosive isle directly on the top of the head, which is not what you want. Production is actually empty right now for Hero. But he does have his war prism. It's still alive. Additional stalkers coming in. Another Colossus joining the party. Four Colossus. Pretty darn intimidating at this stage of the game without question. Corrosive Bile's landing. Almost taken down an observer, but there are enough servers here. It doesn't really matter. Bailing's on the left side. Not really accounted for. Immortals absorbing those shots like bosses. No, oh, then Corrosive Bile finishes off two of them in the meantime. More stalkers warping in. This is as all in as you can get from Hero. He is not replacing his workers. He needs to win this thing now. He's down 20 workers in that supply. The Colossus are trying to kill as much as they can. 14, 16 kills. 10 kills on the new one. 17 on this guy. Continuing to push in. Queens can't really stand against this. Is he retreating from his third? I don't think he wants to do that. Corrosive Biles are really all Rainer has to stay alive at this point. There are no Corruptors. There is nothing. There are no Vipers. Nothing that can handle these Colossus directly except for Corrosive Bile. And the dodging has been pretty fantastic here. Eight drones going down. Oh, direct hits on the Colossus. Bad. Trying to keep him alive. There are three here. And bam! That's the good game hero. Takes game number two. Basically just doing what he did in the last game. Except this time he kept his Colossus alive. And the Baneling hits weren't quite as destructive. I think it helps... That he had this little narrow choke to hide in. That the Banelings weren't coming from all directions. Look at these guys, though. Look at these guys. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. oh, they didn't get the Colossus, however. 18 kills, 20 kills, 22 kills, 19 kills on those Colossus. Not too bad. And, yeah, the Ravager Corrosive Piles couldn't quite connect on what they wanted to. And, yeah, I mean, Hero was not replacing his worker count. He's like, I'm at 51 workers. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not expanding. I'm not making any more probes. Let's go. Let's go with the plus two attack and the extended thermal lance timing. Very, very nicely well executed there. So we are tied up going into our third game in this best of five. What a fantastic display of Protoss aggression and dominance there. I mean, again, Rainer, really hard to kill. One of those immortal zergs these days. But, uh, whew, hero making it happen, Cap. And let's move on to game number three. World of Sleepers for game three. Top right, Rainer. Bottom left, Hero. Hey, you know there's a podcast? Just search Falcon Paladin Hour on your podcast app or on a web browser and you will find a weekly podcast with myself and Somicron and Ozzy talking about and arguing about nerd stuff like books, magazines. Wait, comic books? Not who reads magazines anymore? Anyway, books, TV shows, movies, video games, all that kind of stuff. If you like that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get a new one every single week free of charge. How do you like them apples? All right, man. Can we mix up the early game here a little bit, you guys? Just a little bit, maybe a cannon rush. Nope, that's a gateway. Nope, that's a hatch first. No proxy hatch. Rainer's like, I'm gonna do Serral style until I die. And it works. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Speaking of nerdy stuff, man, I really enjoy My Hero Academia. It's been really good. Uh, really, uh, actually, I'm casting this before the latest episode. That aired about uh, 24 hours ago, as of the time of this posting. But uh, really exciting stuff, man. I cannot wait to see what's going on there. But you know what the best anime I watched this year was? Demon Slayer. Holy smokes. Demon Slayer has some of the best characters and some of the best art of any anime I have ever watched. It is by far one of my favorites. And I think... I don't know. This feels simplistic, but man, the main character is just a straight-up good dude. And he is willing to sacrifice himself to help the innocent. That's it, man. It's the paladin archetype. It's what I've fallen in love with my entire life. It's always what's appealed to me. It's the Superman kind of a thing. Although Superman is overpowered and therefore not fun. It's easier if your hero has weaknesses and flaws he needs to improve upon. And that's what this is. Demon Slayer is very much about that. It's a world where demons and zombies exist. 
and they're faster and meaner than humans, and only Demon Slayers can kill them, people specifically trained in it. And most people don't know that the demons exist at all, and just a village gets wiped out, and people are like, oh, that's weird, wonder what happened. But anyway, it's just, it's great. I cannot speak highly enough about it. Tanjiro is one of my favorite protagonists of all time. You should check it out. Demon Slayer. Available on Crunchyroll. Available on lots of different places, to be honest. Wherever you happen to be. Proxy Stargate from Hero. We switched it up. We switched up the early game. Heck yeah. So we have an Oracle name ready to go here. I think it's actually a remake of a... Of one we've used, but... There are really only so many... As the third hatch goes down, Oracle names that really make sense for the Oracle, and we do get retreads every once in a while. Reaper seems a little bit more diverse in name. Just because, I don't know, there are, like, you can fit humans in there, and Oracles are just robots, usually? Anyway, like, for example, 343 Guilty Spark. After his initial time in the Caprulu Sector, the monitor of Installation 4 came to realize these Protoss were not the Covenant. And the virulent parasitic race they call the Zerg are not the Flood. The forerunner, forerunner race was not his creators, but were in fact an entirely different form of entity known as the Zalnaga. Yet in the middle of this mess, humanity was still here? The mysteries of these similarities bothered him so much that he deemed it necessary to stay with the Protoss to discover their secrets for as long as they let him serve as their oracle. Yeah, 343 Guilty Spark is one of the best characters. One of the best robot characters in all of fiction. HK-47 is the best, though. HK-47 makes me happy and just like an intrinsic level for some reason. Anyway, there are no spores here because this timing is earlier than normal spore timing. And this Oracle doing some serious damage, forcing two, two spores to be built, forcing a lot of lost mining time, and getting four drone kills. Not too shabby, 343 Guilty Spark. Again, I, I mentioned it earlier, but seriously, I'll be playing Halo out on Twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin. So come say hello. It's going to be a good time. Another Oracle is now here, and if you bring the one who has the full uh, shields up in first, you're going to have a good time with it. That Spore is still not done, but the Queen count is high enough, it's a little bit intimidating. Yeah, the Queens are the problem here. Meanwhile, Zerglings do find the Proxy Stargate. They're going to depower and then take it down, and there's really not much that Hero is going to be able to do to shut it down. Here, turn to come in, getting some shots off on this Queen to kill it, but no! Guilty Spark! Guilty Spark stays alive! Gets that queen kill, is down to all of 4 HP. So queen kill counts for something, I guess, but making that second oracle effectively get a queen, I'm not sure was worth it. All right, so slowing down Raynor a bit in the early game, forcing him to make more units than he wants to, forcing him to replace drones he doesn't want to replace. In an ideal situation, a Zerg player is left alone for the first six or seven minutes of the game, and then it's easy for them at that point. That's why you have to harass Stasis Ward. Catches a couple drones. Not a bad response from Raynor. Not perfect, but not terrible either. Zerglings say no third base for you. We're just going to kill the probe before the base even starts coming up. How does that sound? And the response is a warp prism. Ooh, the Templar Archives. That's a fast Templar Archives. We're definitely going to see some Archon harass as the follow-up. Hero decides to take a third base on the low ground, which not as ideally defendable. It's a bit more wide open compared to this one that has a ramp, but hey... Whatever, the Zerglings are annoying. We'll take the third base where we can get it. Honestly, there's not much defending in this right now. If these Lings want to come in and harass it, the Oracle would have to turn on the beam. Anyway, are you still doing stuff? Yeah, man. All right. Three kills there for that Oracle. Uh, is Guilty Spark still alive? Guilty Spark. Oh, there was the one defending down here. Nice. Guilty Spark still alive. And I guess there are some similarities between the uh, Forerunners. Or the Covenant, rather. The Covenant and the Protoss. And the Flood is the Zerg. Now, the problem here with your Harass is that Queens are really good anti-air. And your War Prism is going to have a hard time with it. Zerglings cruising on in to the natural. Nope. Cruising on into the third. There's a lot of energy on this Oracle. So you're going to kill a... Yep. Kill a probe. And then get out of there. Especially with the shield battery up. I mean, that makes it really hard to kill much of anything if you're a Zergling. You want big hits. You want big hits if you're fighting against shield batteries. Little tiny hits that can be healed up pretty easily. Not that, not not ideal. Anyway, we're at 57 workers. Taking that one, two, three, fourth gas now is Rainer. Never mind, he has the high saturation extractor here. Allowing for more gas income without as many workers. Ooh, big time, big time roach it on those Archons. Haven't seen this in a while. I feel like Archon Harass has kind of gone out of style just because the Zerg gets a ton of roaches and we call it a day. It's hard to die to Archon Harass as Zerg, at least at this level. I mean, obviously, I can die to Archon Harass, no problem. I, I accept that challenge. Thank you very much. 
Overseer with speed cruising on in to see what we're dealing with. And really not much you didn't know. Feels like a bit of an Archon Zealot play. Oracle down, but does actually stasis a drone. Which doesn't seem as impressive, but okay. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of Immortals here and Charge Lots on the play with some sentries. Now, this can be pretty good if your opponent doesn't have Banelings, but we've got Ravagers and a lot of Roaches, like a lot of Roach Ravager here. It's 97 to 58 army supply. This feels like Rainer just decided to go for it. And here he comes, man. He's going for it. Missile attack level one finishing up right now. Perfect timing from Rainer. About 7 minutes and 50 seconds. Big old Roach Ravager army ready to rock. Corrosive by Oh, dodged. As Guilty Spark here trying to kill as many of these Ravagers as it can before the attack commences. Corrosive by Oh, dodge, dodge, dodge. Trying to use force fields here pretty effectively, but... Man, that Oracle's going to get a Ravager kill. Not bad. 10 kill Oracle here. All with his 4 HP. 343 three, Guilty Spark. Making it worth it here. And Rainer has to pull back. He doesn't like what he sees. Fourth base. Just now done for him too. He expanded behind it, which is really nice. He's making some circlings. He's getting a Baneling Nest. He's recognizing the Zealot. Attack count is really high. Phoenix cruising around trying to see what is what. And they're going to see an immediate saturation of Rainer's fourth base. So that counts for something, I suppose. High Templar in production. Add a hero. Going to use those for Archons. He does not have Storm as a result. Using High Templar for anything is just dumb. I mean, I know they have a basic attack and everything, but seriously. It's like, what, five damage a shot? Really slow? Yeah, it's not what you need. Not what you need for DPS purposes. It was really just there so that F2-ing Protosses wouldn't F2 move their High Templar into the opposing army. It was really nice of Blizzard to help out the F2-ing Protosses. Grossa Bile landing. A couple of Ravagers die thanks to Force Field. Zerglings trying to see if they can cancel a base here. And they can. Oh, they can. That's a problem for Hero. I mean, his fourth base is not coming up at all. That is a direct cancel. But the Archons in the front trying to absorb a lot of the damage here. Doing bonus damage versus the Roaches for sure. Force Field's really keeping the army away while this hatchery goes down. Is Hero. Hero just easily takes down the fourth. Holy crap, 11 drones get killed here as well. All you gotta do is dodge Corrosive Biles if you're a hero. And you might be able to win this thing right here, man. We're looking at it. Some Banelings are on the way, and Banelings without speed crashing into Archons. They don't care. Archons do not care about that, but if they're weakened enough and there's enough Corrosive Bile and Ravager attacks, maybe they do. God, these Roaches are just getting melted. Immortals are starting to fall, however. Banelings trying to sneak around the backside for a sneak attack don't really accomplish much. As the target firing was there and ready to go. Where's the warp prism is what I want to know. He's just making immortals back home. He's trying to do what he can here, but the defender's advantage of Raynor is really kicking in right now. The immortals are backed into a wall. They can kill these roaches, but the ravagers are a bigger problem for sure. Uh, yeah, 14 kills on this immortal. 17, 11, 11. Ravager maybe has five here. I guess that makes sense cost-wise. And there's your Warp Prism, but Hero is not interested in warping in additional reinforcements at the front. Didn't care about Zealots. Would have been pretty good, I think, too, to be warping in a ton of Zealots there, but he was too busy making additional Archons. Killing that base was what he was aiming to do, and getting any more damage was basically gravy at that point for Hero. Warp Prism, sneak on on up to the north. But there's an entire Zerg army ready for it, so nope. Thank you, but no. Might as well kill a creep tumor or two while you're at it. Kill a roach. See how much damage you can get done. Hey, look, the fourth base is trying to come from Hero again. No, say the Zerglings. That's not going to happen, my guy. We have plus one attack, especially. And that's a cancel. Meanwhile, Bailings roll on into the third base and get mm, two probe kills. So nothing too major there at all. Again, they don't have the plus two attack, so they can't one shot those probes. Army supply 8081, incredibly close. Three base to three base, which is not what Rainer wants. He's actually long distance mining from his fourth. He recognizes he needs it so bad. These Zerglings, the ones who canceled the fourth, are getting some stuff done. Look at them just being around, forcing Hero to warp and stuff back home instead of at the front. You're going to do some more Prism juggling. 
to try to win against this army. Zealots trying to get in here. Yeah, Zealots going to warp in to deal with it. No problem. Dude, is Raynor going to lose his third base? Holy smokes, Raynor loses his third. Uh, hero again. That was the goal. We kill the third, we pull back. Raynor, his third base uh, is back now. But it's, I mean, it's not a fourth base anymore, I guess. It's a, it's a, it's a third, which is what I called it. Anyway, this is insanity. Ah, this is such a good series. I told you. I told you this was such a good series. Hit that like button if you're enjoying it thus far. I mean, this has been some really high-level ZVP. Really, really high-level stuff. I am enjoying it immensely. I wish I got GSL replays more often. Or at all, I suppose. <sighs> All right, what are we at? Uh, heroes maxed out. Rainer's 150 supply, which is not where you want to be if you're a Zerg player. Basically on a Roach. Well, mostly Ravager Baneling here. I mean, Hero dancing about out here is not going to really accomplish much for him. He's got a fourth base coming up. Trying to defend against this uh, roving band of Zerglings, which have been extremely annoying. Like, ridiculously annoying here. But Rainer, he's got his third. He's replacing his third. Warp Prism trying to be annoying here as well. Army Supply 135 to 109. It looks like Hero's waiting for Storm. Waiting for it. And Rainer's got a Spire coming up as well. Zerglings! Nope. I really want to kill this fourth, but the Zealots are like, you jerks, let's get out of here. You're so fast, I hate you. All right, man, so Ravager Baneling. Great storms on the Banelings, though. Insanely good storms on those Banelings. The Baneling count is not nearly as high as Hero would have to deal with otherwise. Rainer's very sad about this, actually. The Zealots need to get in. Going through that choke is a terrible idea, have I mentioned. Those Banelings, wow, they got a better hit than they had any right to, right in the middle of those Immortals. It should have been killed out, but uh, apparently not attack commanding right there is Hero. Greater Spire on the way, and we're a bit on a clock here if you're Hero. You need to kill Raynor now, or there's going to be a Greater Spire and Brewlord coming at you in just a couple minutes. Again, the Cross of Piles take down an Archon. Going through that choke, don't do it, man. Look, kill these rocks, open it up a little bit, and make it easier on yourself to attack into that base, because as it stands... Again, you're on a timer, guys. You're on a timer. Zealot's trying to take a sneaky roundabout way to maybe finish off this base, which I'd be a huge fan of. Banelings trying to crash on something. It takes like 16 Banelings to kill an Archon if it's at 100% health. Uh, suddenly, we're just marching in, and suddenly Raynor is running for his Zergi life right now. He's trying to get Corruptors up, but they're not going to be useful until that Greater Spire is done. He's going to lose his third base again. He's going to lose a ton of drones again, and I'm not sure he can hold it off this time. This is a lot of Immortals. They've got plus two attack. The Archons are pretty scary, too. In the mix there, High Templar ready to throw down Storms right now. In fact, and that's your good game. Hero wins game three to take a two to one lead in this series. Looking really good doing it. Getting the upgrades, getting the compositions, dodging Corrosive Biles like a boss, not overextending, losing his fourth base a couple times, but just continuing to keep at it. And yeah, and then getting a fourth base here, going for a fifth base, and killing Zerg Hatcheries. That's how this works, right? That's how you win against Zerg, is you kill Zerg Hatcheries, and three of them went down here. The third base twice, and the fourth base once. And at that point, the income is just not good enough for Rainer to keep up. He's trying to get to Broodlord, but he doesn't have the economy for it. He was at 40 drones at the end of the game. 38 of them went down. Only six probes died, despite the bailing harass, despite the zergling harass. Uh, just a fantastically well-executed game from Hero, and he just needs one more win to take down Rainer in this round of 16 in this group stage. I mean, they're best of five series in a group stage, which is weird, but man, it gives us some great stuff to cast and great stuff to watch. I'm not going to complain about the weirdness at all. So, boom, game three in the books. Protoss up, 2-2-1, two, two, looking great. Again, get there before Broodlords can, and you're going to have a better time of it. So, we're going to move in to game number four. Don't go anywhere. We shall return shortly. 
Game number four is on Thunderbird. Bottom right, Rainer. Top left, Hero. Same spawn locations as the last game. Wait, hang on a second. No, Hero was in the bottom left. And Rainer was in the top right. So, I was kind of right, but... Once again, three brain cells, you guys. Hey, Hero. You want a cannon rush? If you lose, you still have another game to beat Rainer. And it would give us a game five... This is a really, really early probe scout, you guys. That's like, bam, throw down the pylon, bam. I know, you can block the hatchery with this early of a probe scout, but... Mm. Ah, it's a gateway. Ah, my hopes and my dreams, they were dashed. Almost blocked the hatch, too, here on Thunderbird, which is a pretty big map, actually. Not huge. Pretty, pretty big map, nevertheless. We're going to do some harassment down here, blah, blah, blah. All right, what else can we talk about? Uh, Watchmen is incredible TV. I just uh, I mentioned it as part of my Sunday watching thing, and uh, HBO just produces ridiculously high quality TV. That's it. I mean, I was never a person to get HBO until Game of Thrones came out, and once I got Game of Thrones, I just was introduced to stuff like Silicon Valley, which is hilarious and fantastic, and like Watchmen, which is really good too, and Chernobyl. Chernobyl might have been the best TV I watched in 2019. It is a fantastic miniseries about the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl in the Russia back in the 80s. And it is, I don't even, like, so good TV. I don't know how else to explain it. The acting is the top notchest. The story is incredible. It's incredibly gripping. This probe wants to die. I like how Rainer is refusing to pull any other workers off the line to kill that probe because it's lost mining time. Don't. I mean, can you get back in there? Maybe the shield's coming right back in, but also the drone is regenerating health at the same time. He's thinking about killing it. Oh, oh, zap and a zap. Oh, one more zap would have got it. One more zap would have gotten it, I think. Or is that six? He needs five. Five damage. Look at this guy heading out. I'm going to become a hatchery. Don't mind me. I've got all of six HP. Oh, he's not becoming a hatchery. Why would you do this? There are lings popping out here. The probe wants to live more than it wants to kill the drone, but I think the probe's dead anyway, so maybe killing the drone was the right choice. I don't know. Like, you're not blocking the third at this stage either. There are zerglings about. And I'm not sure you're making it home at the stage with four lings chasing you and hitting you in the back of the head every couple seconds. Meh, meh. Is that another Stargate? It certainly is. We certainly have one more Oracle name for the series ready to rock and it is a bit of a long one so i might need to read it quickly and in addition there we go and in addition start it maybe a little bit earlier than i would otherwise hmm how early has rainer been getting new the uh, pneumatized carapace speed here for his overlords uh something Anyway, it's at three minutes now, so that's pretty good. I do try to get it pretty early in my games, too, but sometimes I forget. So this is Oracle Falcon Paladin. It's been several centuries since the first radio signal has been broadcast. Once a really talented and charismatic StarCraft gamecaster cast an awesome match between two Protoss players. The game was epic, and he enjoyed it very much. 500 years have passed since, and the broadband signal was detected by accident by the communication system of a Protoss carrier. Hmm. Orbiting a distant, Zerg-infested planet. The chief communications officer reported this unusual broadcast to the captain. The captain didn't know who this Falcon Paladin was, but he liked the way Falcon Paladin admired the Protoss might. Happily, he, the captain of the carrier, had connections with the Protoss High Council and issued some high-level scientists to an analyze the speech patterns and make a virtual replication, a replica of Falcon Paladin's brain so that it would be used as an omnifunctional AI. Now this oracle is being piloted by an awesome StarCraft caster's exact copy of Neuron's synaptic action potentials. It does not only scout and kill workers, but it also spreads the greatness of the purity of form. And kill drones, by the way. Four drones down is not bad for your first Oracle. Five drones is just fantastic. You're not going to get much better than that with your first Oracle. As not even a proxy. That was just a regular Oracle attack. Not too shabby. Well done, Falcon Paladin, the Oracle. We shall remember you always. Twilight Council on the way, Robotics Facility on the way, Rainer just macroing his little heart out here. Again, no sign of a two and a half base timing attack, no sign of any, like, Nidus play. Rainer not going for Stormhost Nidus at all, I'm realizing during this series. Does he not believe in that strategy? It's pretty good, y'all. We, we saw Dark use it to great effect at BlizzCon. We saw Rogue use it too against Protoss and just make them look silly, but... Rainer apparently is a conscientious objector who's not interested in doing it. 
for reasons that I kind of want to ask him what those reasons are. So Falcon Maladin comes in. He might be trapped. This could be a trap situation. Let's throw down a stasis to slow down the gas income at this extractor just a little bit. No, run! Okay. Phew. Got out of there. Everything is totally fine. Poor drone is stasis. Oh, did I tell you guys about a game that I played 3v3 the other day? So as a 3v3, one of the Protoss on the other team went for proxy void rays and got fed gas by his two opponents, a Protoss and a Terran. And uh, he murdered my two teammates and I rushed for Hydras to deal with this because if he'd hit me first, I would have died. I didn't have any Hydras at that stage. It was like five minutes. It was such a fast attack. Anyway, he kills my two teammates effectively. And then I just go mass Hydra and I'm like, you can't kill me with your void rays because Hydras, Hydras are stupid good. And then I just aim moved my hydras across the map, and my opponents had like a handful of marines and like a couple stalkers and like a tank because all their gas had been sent to their teammate to make this thing work. So, <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot the other Protoss was making mass oracles. So, which again, not very good against Hydra, and especially all the hydras that I had. I was, I mean, tons of hydralisks popping out there. Anyway, so what they did is they threw down a ton of stasis swords at the ramp leading into their shared base. <laughs> So my Hydras got blocked two or three different times with the Stasis Swords catching all of them. I was not very smart with it, let's just say that. But at the end, I won it anyway. Just going mass Hydra with some Zergling, uh, I managed to beat three other players after my two teammates died because they put all of their eggs into the Void Ray basket, and Hydras are just that good against Void Rays. It was, uh, it was a crazy game. It was a fun one. I also played a Mana Battle, which I might end up casting just because it was nuts. I want to say one of the teams was Ghost, Swarm Host, uh, Ghost, Swarm Host, Tank? It's like Ghost, Swarm Host, Mutalisk, Tank, or something like that. It is a weird composition, for sure. Mono Battle's a lot of fun that way, though. They're always very strange, just because you get weird compositions you probably have never seen before. Raynor, fourth base on the way. Storm pretty early here from Raynor. Going for that storm. Going for that plus two attack. He wants to end this thing now. This is a pretty early timing attack from him. I mean, sure, he's got three bases, but that's because it's Thunderbird. And not getting three bases on Thunderbird is a cardinal sin. Fourth base. Warping in from Hero. Yes, from Hero. He's not German. I don't know why I said it that way. He's definitely a Korean Protoss. Creep spread in like a boss. Raynor wants to creep up to this fourth as much as he can. Actually, this isn't as much of a timing attack as the previous games have been, because usually Hero gets an attack in before the fourth gets started. And for now, he's pretty happy just to hang out, get Storm, get that fourth base up. Rainer is going for a Spire, though, and an Infestation Pit and a Greater Spire. And this is the risk you take when you go for a later attack. Your Zerg opponent will probably be on Tier 3, just like you are, right? High Templar, Tier 3. Archons, Tier 3. Do we get... Oh, is that a Storm Drop? Mm. It was! Alright, pretty nice. Five drones go down, some Zerglings. Not the end of the world, though. But as I was saying, your opponent's going to be on Tier 3 just like you are. So generally, Protoss, if you attack early enough, you can have the Tier 3 units when your opponent's still on Roach Ravager Baneling, which is not anywhere close to Tier 3. But if you let them wait long enough, suddenly their Tier 3 is up, and it's pretty good in all situations. The Infestors are a fantastic unit. Really great support for anything that you're going to be able to do here as a Zerg player. And then Broodlords are pretty darn hard to deal with as Protoss in general, especially if you don't have any Tempest. You do have some Storm, which is pretty good. But it's really hard to do without Tempest, in my experience, anyway. Stasis? Nicely done! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 of them? 8 of them? Stasis is not bad. Rainer's in trouble. Economically, y'all. War Prism has taken some damage, but is definitely still alive here. Clearing the creep out, trying to make it recede so that Raynor doesn't have an exact setup as to what he's doing here. Bailing drops at the third base, and then going in for the scout in the main base while you're at it. 11 drones killed, 61 to 82 workers. Raynor economically doing all right for himself here. Great storms, though, and keeping the High Templar alive with the War Prism is such a disgustingly sick move. That is really good. The pre-splits here from Raynor are pretty fantastic. He's catching the storms, though. Man, look at him allowing... Oh, the High Templar to get storms off. It's so good. Creep spread back. Army supply, 124 to 103. 
in favor of Hero. Here come the Banelings, though. Running away from the Banelings, so much of the ground army just evaporates for Hero. Roach is standing in. The War Prism only has so much room for refugees, and suddenly the army supply is 83 to 42. Baneling, good unit, sir. Blink's finishing up. I'm not sure how much Blink matters. Oh, almost charged into those Banelings like the Zealot in the Legacy of the Void cinematic. That guy did, but he died now. So that's not great. I'm going to go ahead, push the advantage here. He's got double the army supply. Reinforcing units cruising across the map right now. He's going for a Greater Spire. He's going for Adrenal Glands for the Zerglings. Plus one attack is done. Plus two attack almost done for the melee. No attack upgrades for the Roaches or Ravagers at all, which I find interesting. I would have liked to have at least one one at this point, but not interested. He's going for the melee attacks because eventually he's going to go for Broodlords is generally the plan. Yeah, that plus two melee attack finishing up as it benefits the Broodlings from the Broodlords. And hmm, so four base in it here. I mean, Rainer is happily sitting on five bases himself at this point. So he's not super worried about Hero being on four economically. It makes tons of sense. Zergling's coming around, maybe trying to get something done with their Adrenal Gland upgrade, which is not done yet. Is he going to wait for it? It's going to be probably about another 15 seconds or so. Oracle, Falcon Paladin Oracle in here doing some serious work right now. He's got eight kills. This is a pretty good Oracle. Great storms on the Ravagers, Zerglings and Banelings trying to crash on in. I still think these Lings are waiting for their Adrenal Glands to finish. They can get in there and attack faster. Rainer trying to hold, getting blanketed with storms, though. Banelings getting killed before they can get anything on. Zerglings coming around from the backside, wrapping around on top of the Stalkers, doing really well for themselves, considering how few there were. Additional Lings come, oh, Banelings coming in now. Adrenal Glands is done in 10 seconds. Dude, is Rainer done? Army supply is even. Broodlords are in production, but there's a ton of Stalkers, and they have Blink. You Blink under those Broodlords, and they die. Banelings getting on top of the Stalkers because they can't Blink out because they just Blinked. And that's going to be it for that Stalker group. So 12 drones go down. No hatcheries die for Raynor. He survives by the absolute skin of his teeth there. That is not where you want to be. Not at all where you want to be. If you're a Zerg player. So the good news for him is Broodlords. The bad news for Hero is he doesn't have much against Broodlords. I mean, Archons are pretty good if you get under the Broodlords. Stalkers are really good if you can get under the Broodlords. Again, there are ifs here. Whereas if you have enough Tempest, you can actually snipe a Broodlord from distance in one volley from like six or seven Tempests and then move away. So the Broodlords are being used defensively, which is not what they want to do. They want to be used offensively to kill bases. If they're used defensively, they can kind of be abused. You can attack at different locations where the Broodlords are not. And kind of keep them running back and forth here. It's how we've seen some Zergs try to respond to the race car mech strategy that was so popular in 2019 and is pretty much dead now, it would seem. But Broodlords not the answer to that really mobile strategy here. Raynor is going to force a cancel on the fifth. There's no saving that one. Not with Adrenal Glands. And not with plus two. Thank you very much. Zerglings decide not to throw their lives away. At least some of them don't. And they get out. Archons, just trying to be annoying, trying to kill creep tumors, I guess, at this stage of the game. They don't have an observer, though. There it is. There is your observer. And Hero replanting his fifth base like a good Protoss should. Zerglings, nope. There's army here. He really wants that base to come up. Creep tumors getting massacred one shot by these Archons. I mean, if there's two of them anyway. Really like killing those tumors. It's going to be super hard for Rainer to replace those as the creep continues to recede in this area. He wanted to be pushing in on this third, but that's not going to be a, a thing in a minute here. I mean, it is now, but you can see it receding fairly quickly. Army supply for Hero. Nice at this point, but not necessarily an anti-Brutal Lord setup. As we have... How many total? The answer is eight. Eight Brutal Lords is a pretty scary total. Zerglings don't want to commit suicide by running directly onto that Archon Zealot. The Storm is so good. Storming the Broodlords direct. It's not bad. Storming everything that is coming at you is also pretty good. That's a lot of Banelings, though. Oh, my gosh. Rainer just does not care what he explodes on. Archon's fine. Immortal's fine. Stalker's better. Zealot's great. High Templar, the best. 
Sentry is also the best. There's a... F oh, Fleet Beacon starting for here, but it feels too late. It just does. I mean, additional Stargate's in production here too, but... At some point... Is that another Baneling run by? Yeah, Baneling roll by. 16 probes killed. Problematic. Stalker's coming into Rainer's third to get some damage done. Zergling's trying to stop that from happening, if at all possible. But 16 drones down is bad. Heroes at 70 workers to 83 for Rainer. Zergling's going for the surround. Oh, they caught him! Caught him backside. These are plus two Zerglings with adrenal glands. A lot of Stalkers go down. Some of them manage to recall out. Plus three attack finishing now for Hero. He's double pumping Tempest right now and getting a mothership. I think Rainer might be losing his window here, you guys. He might be losing his window of victory. Uh, but plus three Zerglings with adrenal glands. Pretty good, as it turns out. Yeah, come on in here, Zealots. There's Zerglings. With great attack speed, and there are spines. You'll enjoy that immensely. Couple banelings ready to roll into this fourth base. Where the mothership is coming up. Where actually most of Hero's army is, it turns out. Stalkers very wisely recognizing. We should scout this real quick. See what's going on. And then respond to it, maybe by not letting your High Templar all die for no reason. There we go. That's a better storm. Still, 16 probes died in the meantime. So that's not very good at all. I'm defending the right side here, too. Uh, yeah, Rainer doing some good work. He's doing some good multi-pronged harass. He's expanding at the 6 o'clock position right now. He's making six infestors to join his broodlords. And suddenly we have the dreaded infester of broodlord play. That is everybody's least favorite part of StarCraft. I mean, Hero is on six bases, so I mean, he's not down at this stage of the game. Although, this base may be in a bit of trouble. Ah, oh, the Storms, though. Oh, the Storms, though. Storm Zealot, pretty good defense. But Roach Baneling, really good against Zealots here. Archon comes up and dies instantly, doesn't even get a kill to his name. Probes transferring, dying there, too. Stalkers, really being obliterated by broodlings for the most part down here on the creep. Uh, more zealots coming on out with their charge ability. The roaches are going to scamper on out of there. They don't have armor upgrades, although plus one just finished as I was completing that sentence. And suddenly what we have is the makings of a super late game ZVP. We have a ton of Tempest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them with two more on the way. So nine Tempest. Definitely going to be one shot. A broodlord. Assuming you don't have any really good transfuses from the queens, which are going to be part of this here too. Let's to move on in. Tempest are here. Oracle, Falcon Paladin, Oracle. That is not the Falcon Paladin, Oracle. Where's the Falcon Paladin, Oracle? Oh, it died. Ah, I don't know when, though. Meanwhile, Rainer decides if you're out, that means you're not defending your third base or fourth base very well. And we're just going to kill it. How's that sound? Bailings are really chasing those probes, but fine. Killing Zealots is fine as well. That allows us to kill this Nexus pretty effectively. And the Hold On Army comes back to deal with this, which... Yeah, that's not good. Do not give Rainer more time to do things. Is Hero expanding to the southern section? He's expanding to about the 630 position on the map. Production tab. Let's bring that back as we see more Corruptors on the way to deal with these Tempests. Corruptors are the answer for those guys. Tempests are the answer for the Broodlords and a lot of professional Protoss players' opinions. And I know there are people in the comments who are going to be like, Tempests are terrible. And it's like, look, man, Hero is making them at BlizzCon against Broodlords. They can't be that bad. Disruptors in production here, too. Yeah, man, we are coming in upon the 20-minute mark. And nobody really seems like they're ready to die yet. I mean, sure, that Nexus just fell. That we saw. And Fessiterans get tossed out, which haven't seen these in a while, have you? I mean, they're more of a zoning technique. They're doing no damage for Rainer here at all. And sure, they're free, but they don't do any damage. I mean... They're effectively bad at that stage, right? I mean, I guess they're neutral at the worst. 
And here comes the process of a ton of spores. And a ton of Tempest just reeling back and forth on each other endlessly. Drone's dying, but so what? Dude, Neural, nice fungal there. Nice Neural there. Nice Neural there. Great storms there, too. The Tempests are getting wiped out. Firing on his own mothership now with these Tempests. All of them going down. Three drones dead, but a ton of Tempests getting killed here as well. Are there enough on these Tempests? My gosh, blanket storming the infested Terrans is so good. Zealots up in the middle of the map. Trying to hold it against a bunch of roaches and zerglings. They can't make it happen. And the creep just belongs to Karina right now. He's got a 12 o'clock position, which is taking some damage, apparently, while we're watching this insanity happen. Spore count pretty high at this stage. Fungal does catch a few of these dudes. There's your neural again. Purification Nova gets a couple investors. Another couple go down there. That is not bad at all, but the Tempest count is whittling down pretty quickly. These Corruptors are mean. Oh, storming your own probes a little bit. Ah, the probes are all dead. The storms are irrelevant. 13 probes going down to mostly his own storms. This base is completely dead. Army supply, 128 to 68 supply. Trying to Nova these infested Terrans as best they can. They're fighting as best they can. Of dying fairly quickly here too and that's your good game Rainer wins it moving on to a game number five in an insanely well defended play with the neuroparasite with the fungal with the infested Terrans and what a disgustingly impressive showing that was out of the young zerg player nine infestors went down only two brew lords died which is really nice considering he had 10 at the end of the game uh, Tempest got killed through a combination of Fungal, Neural, and Corruptors to the tune of... How many Tempest died? 12? That's a lot of Tempest that went down. 92 probes is huge as well. Heroes down to 31 probes at the end of the day. And yeah, he just economically could not hang. And he knew it. He knew it would be really hard to do, but he needed the economy to back himself up. And he wasn't going to get that. So instead, we get a Game 5. We get a really excellent, fantastic Game 5 between these two players. I am excited. I love a ZVP Game 5 more than maybe anything else in all of StarCraft. It gets me more excited than anything else. Maybe like a ZVT with Serral and Innovation or when Morrow's at the top of his game can be really good too. But ZVP in general, as far as matchups are concerned, are my favorites. So let's move on to game number five. Stay right there. Don't you move a muscle. We're on Winter's Gate. It is game five. Holy smokes. Hold on to your seats. This is going to be an incredible game five. Between these two players at the top of their game. Top left on Winter's Gate where it's very cold. It's going to be Rainer. And in the bottom right, same location, just a little bit further away. It is Hero. Woo! That was a crazy game number four. But guess what? We've got a game five to punch out at you today. You excited? You ready? You're moving? You're going to do this thing? Yes, you are. Put your votes in now. Who do you want to win? In this matchup, I think pretty much everybody who doesn't main Zerg really wants Hero to win there, here out of just principle of the matter. Because <laughs> everybody hates Zerg. I get it, man. Although, I think I've said this before, but I almost prefer that Zerg be considered not overpowered and maybe even underpowered because then I have an excuse for my ladder games when I lose. Now it's like, you can't get to GM with Zerg. How much do you suck? And it's like, look, man, only a certain number of people are allowed into GM. That's not how that works. But even then, I'm like, oh, I've got to diamond uh, too. That's pretty good. One of these days, will I have ever have the time to dedicate myself to get into Masters? I don't know, man. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. And maybe actually learning ZVZ would be a big part of that. Maybe one day. I just, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I just don't see the value in it is the problem. Ooh, this is a very quick gateway into Cybercore out of Hero. He did not go gateway expand, although he is expanding now. Don't know what he's worried about, other than the fact that he saw it was a pool first play. So maybe that's what he's concerned about, is the fact that Zerglings will be coming across the map sooner than you would expect it. So get that Cybercore down, allow you to get things like Adepts out faster, Stalkers out faster, and help with your wall. So a little bit of a two-for-one situation there for our Protoss player.
Robotics facility, going to be the first tech structure out of Hero here, so we're not going to see oracles in this game. Overlord says, oh yes, Adepteras, eh, never seen that one before, going to report that back to the main office dutifully. And then your third base comes down for Rainer once a handful of Zerglings are out, they're chasing the probe around, but the Adept should be able to save it, depending on what the Adept wants to do. Slow zone, now affecting both the Adept and her shade. Which is pretty cool. Zerglings and a queen showing up just now. And three shots on the Adept from the queen are exactly what you want. Oh, hang on. Wrong way. A little bit juked. And once again... Oh, didn't finish the transfer. That means she's dead in here. She made the decision to die. But she's going to kill as many of these drones as she can before she escapes. Hold on. Oh my gosh, she got out. I thought for sure she was dead. Two kills and six HP. Adept number two gets another drone kill. And a no. Ah, spore crawler, last second. And Adept gets out. So both Adepts survive. One kill for that one. Two kills for that one. And I don't know, keeping both Adepts alive is not too shabby. You can use them for defense and for future battles upon later. Anyway, we've got War Prisms out. That's exciting stuff. Uh, both the Adepts go into the War Prism. See, if the Adepts were dead, you wouldn't be able to load them into the War Prism right there now, would ya? Definitely, absolutely not. So, I mean, Rainer might at this point be the most passive Zerg player in history. He just has no interest in going for crazy aggressive plays at all. He just plays the same style every game. And I mean, it does well for him, but man, it is a lot of just Zerg sitting back and macroing up. Again, I just feel like I wish Zerg was a bit more of an aggressive race. I kind of feel like personally that's what I want my style to be, but Zerg is just not built that way. And as a result, I'm kind of trying to fit uh, my square strategy into a round pole, you know what I mean? Strategy peg, whatever it is, Immortals on the way, really important if you're trying to win a PBZ. There's your other gas, already got roaches in production because it's Raider, and roaches are the staple of the mid-game against Protoss and his book of how to win StarCraft. So double Immortal War Prism Harass here, don't see this doing a whole lot, oh snap, no! No! You can't lose these sentries! You can't lose the sentries! Oh my gosh, the sentries are dead! Oh, did he save one by picking it up? He tried to save one by picking it up. I don't know if he actually got it, though. The immortals have to come back home to deal with this. Oh, losing those sentries was bad. Rainer, just a little poke, man. He wasn't trying to kill Hero there, but he got some damage done anyway. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh! More Zerglings get in. Going after these probes? Are you serious? Hero can't afford to lose these probes right now? Not in the game 5, anyway. The probes pull off the line because they need to kill these Zerglings while an Adept warps in. And finally, all the Zerglings are going to die. So Hero, a bit of a push, got a couple of mortals. His two Adepts are still alive. Very nicely done by them, but Ravager's on the way here, too, from Raynor. Queen's after the War Prism. Oh, gosh. Get out of there! No! War Prism down, Slow Zone actually helping to kill it there. Slow Zone has an effect on the game. Have I ever cast a game where the Slow Zones had that much of an effect on the game? I don't know. That War Prism dying was massive. Hero has to go home. Hero doesn't want to just be stuck here with no reinforcements and no ability to juggle on creep. Ah, oh, that was brutal. The War Prism desperately trying to flee through the Slow Zone. The Queens get the extra shots off that they need to kill it. Now Hero's aggression is done. He's making another War Prism, sure. He's making a third base, which is very nice too. Zergling's trying to see if they can shut that down, but Hero's a little wise to Raynor's little attempts at this stage of the series. He knows what he's dealing with. He knows Zerglings are going to try to come and kill it now. So keep the army close and you keep your Nexus alive. That's all you got to do, man. Keep it close. Plus two attack getting started from Hero. He loves his upgrades, as all Protoss should. Actually going plus one missile attack this time is Raynor. So I don't see an intent to go for Broodlords with that plus missile attack starting now. Adepts 
right here in this mineral line, getting surrounded by drones. One of them is going to die to drones. Just kidding, a Ravager actually killed it, but six drones got killed in the meantime. That was pretty good for two extremely injured adepts. Rainer, toss it up at fourth base, down the bottom left here. Two more adapts shading into the third. Good pull. Good reaction time on those drones. The adepts don't finish their transfer, but then they get caught out by Zerglings up here instead, and they're going to die. Warp Prism decides it's time to move out for round number two of Warp Prism harassment or just general reinforcement of the front lines. Hey, look who's going to Lurkers. Hey, Raider's mixing it up. We haven't seen Lurkers in the series today. Kind of like that he's pulling this out right now. Lurkers, Hydras, that's why the plus one missile attack. And he's getting Groove Spines, so it's not going to be all Lurkers all the time. Definitely going to be Hydras, too. Creep spread, pushing out. Ooh, an Observer dies because an Overseer joined the party. That hurts. You're an Observer, and you're just so used to being free and undetectable, and then suddenly eight and a half minutes in, and a, you know Overseer shows up, and you're done. Charge is finished up for Hero. Love the skin on these Immortals, by the way. Have I mentioned that? It's just hot. It is just straight fire, man. That is some really good stuff. Yeah, man. It's a bit of quiet. I don't know what to tell you. Hero's <laughs> fourth base is coming up on the right side. Rainer's droning up, going for a hive, making his first lurkers. Going for muscular augments for the hydras. They do pretty good against war prism harass. A few hydras and a roach. Good combination there. Loving that. Gotta steal that one day. And yeah, Rainer just taking a fifth base now to try to keep ahead of Hero on his fourth. So pretty quiet. Hero really needs to move out, and he is. He's going Disruptors. Look at those Disruptors, though. Hmm. Look at them. Ah, they're so visually appealing. They're just pretty, is what they are. Where'd your Observer go? Remember how it died a second ago? Because <laughs> uh, an Overseer showed up. Do you recall how that happened? Roaches trying to shut down this right side base, but there are shield batteries and cannons. Ooh, free disruptor, pretty good though. Disruptor comes over to deal with it and just gets smacked right in the face with acid bile. Which, again, talked about this. How do roaches produce enough bile that fast to continuously fire it out of them? Like, where does it come from? What are they eating? Doesn't make any sense. Like, power you can store, right? Anyway, uh, trying to kill these zealots, but they're chargy and they've got shield batteries. And that's a beautiful Nova. Whoa! Oh! Oh, and the coup de grace right there. Absolutely taking down those roaches surrounding them. And then, bam, coming in with the Nova. Beautifully gorgeous. Just so good. Spire coming in. Four Vipers for the first time today as well. Going to try to Viper Immortals into this uh, Lurker group, I bet. They are getting Adaptive Talons. And here we go. Coming through the slow zone. Even Purification Novas are affected by the slow zone. How cool is that? Man, everybody hates these, but they're interesting at the very least. And Hero still hasn't been really bothered by anything. In a straight-up engagement, I think he just wins. Especially if the Novas get any hits at all. That Lurker gets whoosh. Tossed into the sky with that death animation. Additional lurkers in production. Ten, ten hiders at a time. On the way here, too. Really relying on Disruptor Novas in this game. Five is hero. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that. Oh, the Bile's taking a lot of energy. A lot of shields. Off of that Archon. Charge Lots coming into the third base. Getting chased away by Hiders, but they got a Queen and a couple drones. Not too bad. 
Not too bad. Are we looking at... Ooh, a Lurker Drop attempt here. Uh, I mean, there's a cannon, so... And they kill... Oh, they do. So they kill the cannon first, and they shut down the space entirely. Lurker pretty good, man. Zealots, however, hacking to death the small army defending the third base. Doing pretty well against the Ravagers and Hiders. Not really being microed all that much here by Raynor. Why is he losing all this stuff? I don't actually know. You'd think he would be. I guess he's microing his face off over here versus the Purification Nova. Blinding Cloud getting tossed down. Lurker's getting wrecked. And uh, Hatchery going down. Raynor doing some good damage on the other side. But Hero taking the bigger swing and connecting on it on the other side of the map on the creep. Lurker, 13 kills and 6 kills on these Lurkers. Oh, they can hit Immortals as they come out of the main base, too. Maybe they can't kill them, but they hit them pretty hard. Still attacking on in. Blinding Cloud is pretty fantastic here. Pretty good indeed. Hiders on the left side, hoping they don't get spotted by this army. Oh, never mind. They got spotted, and they are all completely dead. 44 drones have been killed. The Natural Nexus is going to die right now. Hiders at the top of the ramp trying to stand in against these Immortals and against these Stalkers. They got the War Prism! They got the War Prism! Abducting the Immortal to its death. High ground advantage really working right now out of Raynor. Another Immortal goes down. Coming on down to Raynor's fourth base, though. Blink Stalkering on top of it. The Immortal doing huge amounts of damage versus this hatchery. It's going to die. Natural base done. I think they dealt with... I think they dealt with the Lurkers here with just a handful of Zealots, if you're into that kind of thing. Templar Archives getting started now, too. More Disruptors on the way. Got more Lurkers in production here, too. Clearing out Creep with the Stalkers. He knows in a straight-up fight he can't engage with those Hiders. They will tear him apart. But he's faster than they are, especially with Blink. And killing anything that he can without actually taking damage is what he needs to be doing with these Stalkers right now. Again, uh, being abducted into a group of Hydra is bad. That's what he needs to avoid doing, but it's hard to not be abducted by Vipers, man. That range is really, really good. So Raynor, unfortunately, uh, three basing Zerg right now, which is incredibly not ideal. Hero is still mining off of two bases, which is perfect from him. And I don't know. I mean, Rainer might be trying to expand down this left side. He's got the resources for it. Just about has the resources for it here. Replacing his Nexus. Or expanding to the top right. Zergling, show up and shut it down. What game sense from Rainer? How did he even know? He didn't. It was an educated guess. He was like, well, maybe there's something up here we can kill. Might as well use the Zerglings for that. Because they're not very good in a straight-up engagement versus all of these Zealots. And whatnot. So it's plus three ground attack for the Protoss and plus two missile attack for the Zerg, and that's it. As far as armor and attack upgrades are concerned. More lurkers on the way. Storm coming in from Hero. Can't engage into the lurkers, you will die. Oh, the Zealot shut this base down. Same thing. So Zealot over here gets a shutdown on the base. Hero replacing the Nexus that he tried to throw down in the top right, and he knows that Raynor doesn't want to move off creep. So that is his advantage. If he can keep Rainer off creep and keep the creep low. Oh, Disruptor down. Yeah, anything that gets abducted into this zone of death up here is just instantly dead. Instantly dead right now. Stargates. Stargates in production from Hero. What is this tech switch? It's 16 minutes. At 16 minutes, he decides he needs to go Stargate against Hydras. Ah. Uh, I mean, really good against the Lurkers, not going to argue that, and there are a lot of Lurkers, mind you. 14 Lurkers, and there are only 9 Hydralisks. But, depending on how much stuff you can get, with your two Stargates, 9 Hydras might be very much enough. Zealot trying to shut down another attempt at Raynor to re-expand. It does get killed by some Hydras. Fleet Beacon on the way! What is happening? He's making additional Oracles! He's got the Storm. High Templar at the back getting hit by Queen's one does go down. Queen's getting target fire pretty nicely. Storm getting thrown down everywhere to send the Zerg back. Blinking up on top of the Queen's. Mm, Zealot's in there and then pulling back instantly. Instantly. Once the Lurkers burrow. Storm on those Hydras trying to keep that Hydra count low. And if he can kill those Creep Tremors, that'd be really nice too. Zealot's throwing away their lives versus this Hatchery. They're all going to die, but they do some serious damage to the Hatch. 
Regardless, I kind of feel like these oracles could maybe... Nice revelation, though, by the way. Maybe take down this hatch, but there's only two of them. So, no. And let the carrier production begin. <laughs> let the 17-minute tech switch into carriers begin from Hero. I don't even... What are we looking at right now? Insanity is what it is. Revelation on these lurkers needs to know where we are all the time. <laughs> this series is getting an epic tag. Everybody watching this right now. An epic tag. I'm telling you. I don't care how it goes from here. We're at game 5. It's 144 to 153 supply. Army supply 97 to 90. It is tech switch into carriers. Versus a million lurkers, which are bad against carriers, legendarily, and a ton of hydras with plus two attack. Now, carriers take approximately forever to build. So, hero, this isn't a very fast strategy by any stretch, but it is pretty good. The vipers are huge game changers here, too. Abducting anything into this is just insta-kill. Like, you gotta stay out of viper range, which I know is impossible to do. I do. Look at him concaving the lurkers here. Meanwhile, Zealots do finish off the Rainer's third base. Oh, crap. That's huge. I mean, it'd be more huge if he didn't actually successfully expand down to the south there. But as it stands, pretty big. Continued revelation being problematic here. Trying to take down that lurker before it get... Ooh, cannon down. Cannon down, Immortals. No, they got too close. They flew too close to the sun. The Immortals are getting killed so hard. The Lurkers, there's just no answer to this from Hero. He doesn't have the requisite number of Immortals he need to kill this many Lurkers. He decides to go into Carriers instead. The Hydra group is really scary, nevertheless, but now Raynor knows there's Carriers. He's going to try to kill as many Interceptors as he can with his plus two Hydras, and they, by the way, they're really good at that. Oh, no, trying to focus down. Nice Storm, nice Storm chasing away the Hydras, keeping that Carrier alive for the moment being... <laughs> this is crazy right now the couriers are trying to kill as much as they can trying to avoid being abducted but again it's so hard to do one carrier down two carrier down <coughs> and all the interceptors are dying as well and i think that might be it from hero the transition into carriers was not an intelligent choice i don't think rainer still happily mining on the southern base and another carrier just died another one just popped something like that his interceptor count is abysmal, though. It is eight interceptors. This base is done. The probes are hiding in a corner, but they're going to get massacred here in just about two seconds. Ready for y'all to die? And there it is. Let a great probe massacre begin. He's going to recall some of them out, though, to somewhere. I don't know where. And Hero's moving out. Hero has decided what he needs to do here to win is move out and stop playing defense. Is he bringing detection here? He doesn't have any detection. He does have, again, revelation is a cool thing. Revelation is a really, really good thing for detection and finding creep tumors and stuff. But still, having an observer would be a little bit better here for Hero. Yeah, top right base. Lurker's murdering that. Rainer has, I mean, he's got the one mining base here. Uh, another carrier abducted. He's got drones fighting this group. The slow zones losing a carrier and that's it. Raider manages to take game number five in one of the most insane finishes in all of 2019. Holy cannoli. I like how someone is just still sitting here in shock because you can hear the music running. Not everybody's left yet. <laughs> We're going to let the music run, too. I, I don't know. I, I want to criticize Hero for going carrier there where plus two hiders already exist. If they didn't have upgrades and you had better numbers of carrier versus hider, it'd be a different situation. It really would. But with the number of hiders already out, there you go, an observer left. And the upgrades they had in your carriers had no upgrades at all. That is just a recipe for death. Vipers are already there, too. I mean, I would have loved to see Storm Immortal. I've seen Storm Immortal do really well against the strategy in the past. You storm the hiders and just walk the Immortals in, crushing Lurkers if you have enough of them. Right? If you're outnumbered 5 to 1, sure, Immortal's not going to do very well. But equal numbers are a little bit better for the Immortals. You're going to do all right. You're going to crush those lurkers, force them back at the very least, and then the hiders can't get close enough because you have a ton of storm. I would love to see that instead, but instead he went for the carrier tech switch, which uh, 
don't understand it, honestly. But, uh, crikey. Crikey indeed. All right. Well, <laughs> what a series. Raider ends up taking it, making it to the final eight of BlizzCon. I think that's what this victory was for the first time in his young career. And I don't think it's going to be the last either. Next BlizzCon, watch out for this kid. Because he's going to be good and he's going to be scary for a long time now. Hero fighting hard. I don't understand his decision making in the last game, but he took it to a game five. Lost three Nexuses. Killed three hatcheries. So that is even now. That's basically like you killed zero hatcheries, right? I think that's what that is. Five carriers down. Mm. Twelve immortals down. How many lurkers died? 21 is a lot of dead lurkers. Not too shabby. 63 hydras too, but... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Positioning. Just decision-making. Highest levels. All right. So at the end of the day, that is going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and your Sunday series. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.